Hi, this is the Black Bear Prepper, and we are about ready to go on another snow trip for the scouts. Um, I love snow camping, I really do, but it is, to a certain part, somewhat dangerous. What do I mean by that? If it's done properly, it is dangerous. If it is done properly, I've been doing this for 10 plus years in the snow with up to 20 people with minimal guides and have never had a problem. Why? Because we plan ahead. Now, most of your gear, your trips into the snow should have at least four meetings. That is a meeting for talking about food and stoves, a meeting talking about setting up your tents, you know, making sure you've actually, I try to put the boys in a tent beforehand, make sure they know how to set up that tent, or at least one person in the group does, and then moving on to a gear packing um, item, which is actually where we pack every single item in the backpack, we have them pull out all their gear, and they pack it all, they put it in, and we check it as it goes in. And that's when we add group gear like stoves, and tents, and fuel bottles, and water filters, whatever that may be. So, um, you know, what we're going to talk about today is kind of what we expect to be in a gear list that doesn't include group gear, doesn't include stoves, doesn't include other items. Our other videos do talk about that, but this is going to be talking more about the gear we wear and the gear we're going to be sleeping in, the most important items that you have. Now, some of this gear is expensive. Does it have to be? No. Um, in the last few days, I've been to Goodwill and the Farmer's Market and Auction. I've been able to get waterproof brand new jackets for $9 that are breathable you know, some version of like a Gore-Tex type material. I've been able to get fleeces from Polar Tech, the best fleece there is out there, for $10. These are $100 items that I've been able to get very cheap, still brand new in the box. I've been able to get boots for next to nothing. Do not go out there and blow a million dollars on your gear. Look around, look for the sales. REI has used gear sales all the time. It is very important to make sure that we don't go into debt to do this. This can be done fairly simple and build it over time. Borrow gear, rent gear. There's you know um, all kinds of things you can do to kind of get around that. Look for garage sales, look at Craigslist. But let's kind of get right into it. Now the first thing we want to talk about is actually on the left side of the of our page here. If you have one of our you know um, snowshoe overnight gear lists um, for scouting, we're going to kind of start with the sleeping bag section and work our way around the room. Why do I start there? Because I think it's the most important thing to worry about. If you get cool during the day, at least we can throw you in a tent, throw you in a sleeping bag, and you can stay warm. So the first thing, a zero degree sleeping bag. Okay, what entail, why do we pick a zero degree sleeping bag? Now in our area, zero degrees is plenty for the winter time. Most of our trips run in the area of somewhere around 20 degrees at night. We usually try to stay 10 to 20 degrees warmer than we think the worst conditions are going to be. So most of the time around here, in most of the trips we go on, it stays right around 20 degrees, 15 to 20 degrees. We want to be in that zero degree range. You'll normally see sleeping bags in the 40, 30, 20, 0, minus 10. Now in your area, that may be more. So you want to, like I said, plan for about 10 degrees more than you think you're going to need. Now girls, I try to always stick with a 20 degree mark. So if I think it's going to be 10 degrees, I want to get a negative 10 back. Now these are my favorite bags. They're made by Wiggies. They're an American made bag company. Um, we want to get the hooded bags, a nice hood on them. We want to make sure that when we unzip them, we have a draft collar. And these draft collars keep the wind out of that zipper. I prefer to put kids with two opposite zippers, like this happens to be a zipper on the left hand side. Why is it I'm right handed? When I cross my arms, it is easier to open a left hand zipper bag. If I'm left handed, it's easier to open a right hand zipper bag. So I usually try to point the zippers into the center of the tent. So I try to put a left hand person on the right side and a uh, I mean, a right-hand person on the right side, so their their zipper faces to the center, and a left-handed person with their zipper facing towards the right, and that helps them stay warmer in there. 
And we want to make sure that if we have a two-man tent, we put two people in there. If it's a three-man tent, we put three people in there. Area in there is going to make you cold. So something like that. We definitely want the mummy-style bag here. And we want to make sure we pull the bag. So let's say this bag is taller than us, and I usually like to see a bag that's taller. I want to pull the bag up and scrunch it up on the bottom all the way up to my feet. So my feet are at the very end. And I'll usually put tomorrow's gear in that foot box to keep my feet warm. Adding more clothing makes you warmer. So if you're going to be cold, add more clothing. Put your jacket on. Put an extra hat on. Put it, you know, add up gear. So some decent, buy a good quality. We prefer synthetic over down. Den down tends to get wet and not recover. You tend in wet snow in the Sierras where we live, it's wet. Now in other areas, you may not have a problem with the wet snow. It may be very dry snow. And that may not be a problem for you. Now we say zero degree or a 20 degree with a fleece liner. Now fleece liners, you can get these just about everywhere. This is a fleece sleeping bag. You could use, you know, fleece blankets, you know, whatever you want to use. I like these because they zip up. You can put them inside the bag or on the outside of the bag if you don't have enough room to really zip them up. And I like one with a draw cord that can drop around your neck. So this adds about 10 degrees of warmth. The silk ones will add about five degrees of warmth. So if you're only needing that little bit, plus this makes it easier because it's way easier to wash than your full size sleeping bag. So something to think about. The uh, next item here is a stuff sack. Now, stuff sacks come in a couple different varieties. They come in one where it's just a bag. Where it's just like this, it just you just put it, put it in there, you stuff your bag in there, they're called stuff sacks. You stuff from the feet to the top, and you stuff. You don't roll anymore. We're not rolling bags, we're stuffing. If your bag has to be rolled, it's not a bag we want to take in the winter. So we want to stuff it in there. Then we have compression bags, which is what we recommend you take with you because the gear is big. This is a compression bag. It has a bag cover that goes over the top with ropes and actually cinches up and allows you to crush down that bag. Now, down bags crush up a lot easier than synthetic bags. So this is definitely something I recommend if you have a synthetic bag so it fits in the bottom of your bag. This is also the EVET version which is waterproof and has a, a breathable membrane on the bottom that allows the air to come out. These are very expensive. Is this necessary? No. I can replace this with a garbage bag. You know, a you know, grocery style garbage bag, you know, for your kitchen, your white garbage bags, over top of your stuff sack or compression sack. You know, keep this stuff dry. That's important, and we'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. The next thing is a sleeping bag. I prefer a two pad system. This is a three season sleeping pad from uh, Thermrest. You don't have to have a Thermrest one, they all work fairly well. I tend not to like the ones that are air and not self inflating. Self inflating meaning there's foam on the inside that will actually keep you a little warmer. Now, uh, you can also get a four season pad. I tend not to like four season pads unless I know I'm not going to get out of the tent. If I'm not going to get out of the tent, four season pad works just fine. But in this kind of situation, we're going to be going on a three season pad. You know, a nice three season pad, and you'll see that right when you purchase them. And then adding a foam pad to go with it. Now this is a three quarter pad, which means it only goes down just below my butt. And that allows me to keep my top half warm. Then I take this, that's real nice and cheap, not my $100 mattress, and I use this to sit on when I'm in the snow. And they actually make small versions of these just for setting in the snow. So something to think about. Okay. Now, there's a bunch of stuff on here that's pretty self-explanatory. You know, um, emergency blanket. That's your Mylar emergency blanket, the kind of silver emergency blanket, space blankets are sometimes called. I recommend grabbing one of those. If you get into a situation where you rip a bag or your tent gets torn up or something like that, where you're getting cold extra weather in there, you may need to add a little bit. And that emergency blanket gives you a little buffer. They're about a buck fifty. I definitely recommend having one. Uh, next item on here, cup of water, cup for water, hot water. So something you can put hot chocolate in. We don't want to do dishes up there. 
and we don't want to be carrying out a ton of trash, so a nice mug is a good idea. Nalgene bottles. Does it have to be a Nalgene bottle? Nope. Just something that can be, we can pour boiling water into, because all of our water is going to come from melting snow. So we want to be able to pour boiling water in there, at least two of these. We should be drinking at least a good two to three of these a day, even when we're just sitting around, because we're going to burn through a lot. A spork, and I'm going to kind of, these are my favorite. Why are these my favorite? Because they're long. We do a lot of freeze-dried foods in the wintertime, and I definitely recommend freeze-dried food for at least the meal that you arrive because it makes it easy. It's super simple. Boil some water, throw them in there. The kids can put the meals inside their coats to help them, you know, stay warm. These are both made by, this one is made by Optimus. This one's made by Sea to Summit. They're both about $9. Uh, this one's made out of aluminum. This one's made out of titanium. The funny thing is actually titanium weighs a little more. I like titanium because it doesn't have the effects of scraping off aluminum in your mouth and that's never really a good idea. So long spoons, well worth their weight in gold. And they come in both the standard version and the spork version. I, you know, either one mattering what kind of food you're going to be taking with you, what are you going to be doing a lot of cooking about. Okay, the rest of it is pretty self-explanatory. You know, whistles, sunglasses, make sure you're bringing sunglasses. Even in cloudy days, sunglasses are important. Headlamps, absolutely important. Now, when we get into clothing, and we're just going to go around the room here, that's the next side. First of all, we're going to start out with our base layers. Now, if it's a warmer trip, we always can start out with a pair of boxers that are non-cotton boxers. We don't want to have any cotton. Cotton kills. Beat that into your kids. You really want them to hear that, not physically, but, you know, let them know it over and over and over again. Cotton kills, and especially in the areas where we're going to lose a bunch of heat. Our feet, our crotch, our armpits, our hands, and our head. All those areas in the back of your neck are very vulnerable to areas like that. So we want to stay away from cotton completely. So a pair of cotton, or a pair of synthetic boxers, you'll hear them called poly blend and things like that. A lot of those will have antimicrobials in it, which is a good idea. The next one is a shirt, a short sleeve shirt. A lot of times during the day, it's hot. So it's nice to have just a shirt we can just throw on, just to have out there, again, no cotton in this. Now this happens to be a Climate Dry, which is a product that dries really quick and also has an antimicrobial in it. This happens to be treated with silver. There's lots of different ones out there. I think they all work pretty good. And also, we want to have something in the long underwear range. Now long underwear does not mean goes to your knee. It means long underwear. This is your bottoms. It's meant to go all the way down to the bottom of your leg. This is important. I recommend a two layer instead of the, the one layer. You'll see them marked a couple different ways. A nice, good uh, shirt. Again, this is a shirt I paid a dollar fifty for. I washed it, good as new, no big deal. Now uh, you can get these in wool. Wool tends not to stink as much as the synthetics. A lot of the synthetics have wash-in treatments that are actually that will help with the antimicrobial factor of you know stinking after a few days. They're very very nice nowadays, and they tend to wick a lot better and dry much much quicker than the wool. Now if you're going to be wearing it every day, if you're up in the snow for 12 you know months out of the year then definitely go with wool because it tends not to wash out. The antimicrobial factor doesn't wash out. Where with synthetics, you're usually going to get anywhere from about 25 to 50 washings. You know, and the company you buy from will be able to tell you that. But don't spend a ton. You know, if you're only going to go on one or two trips a year, hit the Goodwill. I bought brand new with the tags still on them for a buck to five bucks. The rest of my base layer, I'm going to have a a hat that's just going to go around my ears because my ears are going to burn a lot more than sometimes I won't be able to have to take off my whole entire outfit but I want something on my ears but I want to vent my head so I'm not constantly shifting gear while I'm carrying my pack. A nice pair of merino wool socks in the medium weight. A pair of wool thin gloves. Excuse me. Definitely recommend. This is having to be lava wool Probably my favorite gloves. I use these all the time. They're just a really super thin pair of gloves. 
They are wool, so they tend, again, not to stink. And they also tend to stay very warm even when wet. These usually tend to get pretty darn wet by the end of the trip, especially where we are in the country. So I like a wool pair that's going to stay warm even when wet. Your merino wool is your highest end wool. They basically go merino, worsted, and regular wool. Your regular wool is going to be your itchiest. If you haven't tried merino wool and you're like, oh, wool socks itch, definitely try something like this. We want to stay away from cotton, again, especially in our boots. If you have boots that may be subject to getting wet, bring more socks. Be able to change those guys out. Next layer. This would be what I consider to be a good all-around layer for my pants. And this is the next layer up. This is what they call four weight, okay, which is basically a fleece bottom. So really simple. Same idea. You could replace this with a pair of fleece pajama bottoms. They sell those all over the place, and you probably have a set sitting at home. My next layer is going to be my warmth layer. Why do we do things in layers? Because we want to be able to, to adjust while we're up there. When we're moving around, we're going to need less clothing. When we are not moving around, we're going to need more clothing. You're going to sit there. It's just like hunting. You know, if you've ever been hunting before, you sit there. You want warmth. So a nice fleece vest. We tend to stay away from uh, at all costs down until we get to our trip. So we can always add a vest, and I always get my vest bigger than my coat. So if I wear a large coat, I want to put an extra large vest in there. That way it can go over the top. A nice heavy duty, you know, 300 weight fleece jacket. The reason I like 300 weight fleece, it tends to be very warm. You're going to eat your zero weight, which is basically your Old Navy. You'll 100 weight, 200 weight, 300 weight. 300 weight's my favorite. Something to think about. This happens to be windproof fleece. This is a, what they call soft shell. It's actually, I, can, I wear this on the outside. I wear it just like a, you know, a rain jacket per se, if it's only windy outside. And then I can put, I have my rain jacket, I can put over the top of this. So something to think about. A heavy duty pair of fleece pants. I, I like a pair of heavyweight fleece pants. Now, why do I like that? I like 300 weight fleece pants. They breathe much better than a pair of waterproof pants. No matter what, the best Gore-Tex in the world does not breathe as well as fleece. So my warm player, I want to have a heavy duty pair of non-down synthetic pants. This would be a polypro type material, you know, polypropylene, or, you know, there's all kinds of different materials out there, but fleece is what we're looking for, and high-end fleece. This should cost you 45 bucks if you were to buy it brand new. Again, look for them in the pajama section of your stores, your Goodwills, and your auctions, and online. Definitely something to hit up. I wear these on the outside while I'm hiking, and then when I get to camp, I'll add a waterproof pant to them. So, something definitely to pick up. I love them. The most important thing you bring with you, multiple fleece hats. Multiple. We want a number of fleece hats, okay? I prefer 300 weight again, non, or uh, non windproof. So the windproof ones tend to make it so you can't hear, and it's hard enough to hear with the storms and everything up there anyways. So I like to bring a couple of these, one to sleep in, at least one to hike in. You know, you can buy simple hats and buy multiple ones at Old Navy for two bucks during this time of year. A heavyweight pair of merino wool socks, and they'll say right on them, heavyweight. So something to think about there. I love fleece socks or adding a second pair of heavyweight socks that I can sleep in. So this is fleece socks. I wear these right over top of my heavyweight socks because my feet tend to get cold. So I'll wear these right over the top and they go all the way up. Make sure your socks when you're wearing them are as high up as you can get them. That helps with the moisture transfer. Again, what was one of those spots? The back of our neck. Our neck has a lot of things going through it. In the summertime, we can add water to the back of our neck and actually help cool us down. We can do the same thing in the wintertime. By adding something to keep the back of our neck warm, 
like a scarf. This is a $2 scarf I got at Old Navy. It works just fine. Don't need to buy anything fancy. Two bucks works great. If you have a down jacket, this is what I carry instead of a vest. I carry a down jacket because it tends to crush down more. I like the standard down jackets. Buy a good quality one. This happens to be a 700 fill. Again, they're just like synthetic jackets where they're based on weight. This one happens to be 700. They usually go down to 550, 650, 700, 800, 900 fill. 900 is definitely the most expensive. I like these. They tend to stay lofty versus the other ones that are really light um, because I'm going to be putting a, a waterproof jacket over the top. So something to think about. This one also has a little hood that comes out of the back. If you can get the ones with a full hood, that's preferable. I do not wear this when I hike. The reason is, is because the backs get soaked on them from the backpack, from me sweating into the backpack. No matter what I've ever done, I've never had a dry back when I get back from the trip. So something to think about there, only for in camp. Our last layer is going to be our waterproof layer. This is going to protect us from the snow. Comes in a couple different combinations. A waterproof pair of pants. I prefer these have full zips. They actually can zip all the way off, all the way down both sides, and zip up to where we're going to have it just ready to go. I can put these on even with my boots, ice axe, crampons, all this other stuff. I can put it right over the top. A jacket that has a we want a Gore-Tex type jacket. This happens to be Event from REI. I like the REI jackets. Nice heavy duty jacket. Jackets come in about three different versions. They'll make one that looks very plasticky on the inside. That's a two layer. They make one with a mesh on the outside, which is going to be a two and a half layer. And my preferable three layer, which has this knit material on the inside, which protects it. You want a full taped seam jacket. And that's the same thing with your waterproof pants, your tents, anything else which is a taped seam. So this is a seam with a piece of tape over the top or a seam sealed on some of the jackets where they're heat welded, okay? A good hood that has multiple adjustment points so I can adjust around in a stiffer brim. I also want this to have a pit zip type system. This is a zipper that runs all the way down the side and big enough to fit over my biggest jacket. So if I'm going with a jacket with a vest I want to be able to fit it over those items. So something to think about. Bigger is better when it comes to waterproof jackets. Uh, on my feet, I wear a couple different things. I have a gaiter, which actually goes over top. So when I'm wearing my fleece pants, it actually goes right over top of my fleece pants. And I can still, they breathe really well and allow me to move really easily. But the gaiters keep my feet from getting wet and my boots. The other thing I'll put on, if it gets really cold outside, is I can add what we'll call a boot glove. Is this necessary? No. Buy a heavy duty pair of boots. But if you're in the real cold areas, this is something to think about for about 25 bucks. You add them onto each boot and they just cover your toes and help your toes stay warm and they really do help. Good pair of waterproof gloves. There's insulated versions and non-insulated versions. I tend to like the non-insulated shell type glove. And then I add my lava wool gloves inside of these. So this keeps my hand dry and adds a little bit of warmth, plus my hand goes in with a, you know, a liner type glove. We get into these guys. This is the Thinsulate brand from Harbor Freight. They work just fine. They've got nice grip on the bottom, so if you're going to do a lot of work, any kind of climbing or rope work, this is nice because it has a little grip on there to be able to control your, your descent and all those kind of things. Still waterproof, you know. Good glove. Last thing, a good pair of insulated boots. This is not a hiking pair of boots. This is not your boots used for backpacking. This is an insulated boot. You actually look inside and you'll feel thickness in there. That's actually warmth creating. You want something like that that's going to create warmth. I like something that has a nice, uh, I tend not to like leather, I tend to like synthetics. Now this had some leather spots on there. Those will tend to fill full of water and freeze in the morning where a synthetic boot won't. So if you've got a non-synthetic boot or at least the areas are going to get real wet, keep in mind most of this top layer is going to be covered by my gaiter. The bottom layer here is going to be 
where I'm going to kick through the snow and things like that. So I want that in synthetic, and I want it to be able to hold up to some pretty severe, you know, kicking through the snow. Some products I do recommend to treat gear, especially if you bought used gear, for your sleeping bag. This is a water repellent type product that goes on the sleeping bag, so you wash this in. You put it in your washing machine, wash it in. Same thing with your coats and jackets and pants and all those kind of things. Um, I like the Nick Wax product. It works really well. The, uh, the Tech Wash, it washes in. They also make a spray, so if you don't want to put it in your washing machine, you can do that. They also make a boot item that you can put on your boots to protect the leather and to clean them and to keep them dry. Now, the idea here is that this item is for Gore-Tex breathable type items. So any of your breathable waterproof items. Non-breathable boots. So let's say you've got a pair of old leather Sorrells. I like Snow Seal. It's not breathable. But neither are your leather boots. So this is kind of a good idea to put on non-breathable boots. This will help keep the leather from getting full of snow. So something to think about. Definitely the cheapest out of the bunch. You know, you're going to spend about 10 bucks on the Tech Wash. The bigger bottles will do multiple items. That bottle will do three different pieces of garments if you're using a front loader. Or only one garment if you're using a wash machine that is a top loading wash machine just because they use so much more water. This product, um, I've already done a couple pairs of boots with it. I like the squeeze bottles versus the little tub. You know, this is important gear. Please let your kids watch this. Watch it with your parents' kids and make sure you're bringing the appropriate equipment on your trips. You want to be able to layer up. I want to be able to just wear my rain jacket if need be. Maybe it's just windy. It's not really cold, but it's windy. I want to be able to do that. Maybe I want to, maybe it's not wet at all out there and I just want to wear something that's breathable and comfortable like a fleece or a down type item once I get to camp. And barely having the stuff right up against your skin that is going to keep the chill off and absorb any moisture that comes off your body because your body will absorb, you know, is going to put out a lot of moisture just from breathing and moving around out in the woods. So something definitely to think about. And look around, people. It doesn't have to be a million dollars. I got my first down jacket for 50 bucks. It was a $200 jacket. I got it on, on Craigslist. You know, doesn't have to be a million dollars. You know, but look for good quality gear. You know, if you're in my troop or in my ward here, give me a call. You know, we can make, we can help out with gear and make and help you pick out different items. If you want to leave messages on the bottom, I try to get to them all. If there's an actual question there instead of a statement and help you with picking out gear. If you have something you're like, oh, I don't know about this or what should I do? Leave comments, leave questions. Like and share if you think this is going to be appropriate for your friends and family. So, as always, this is the Black Bear Prepper. Have a great day, and always get out in the woods.